This week in Jamaica Now, watch your spending. Private sector warns the government as elections draw near. School board chairman sacked after students used in political protest. Tearful testimony at Tivoli Inquiry. They kill Fabian. They say, March, and no, it can't be. Fabian, they say, Yes, daddy, Fabian. And Fernando died too. I don't hear him calling again, daddy. I don't hear him calling, daddy. Opposition legislator warns of boycott of British Prime Minister on his visit to Jamaica and prison selfies. Gleaner investigation uncovers hundreds of photos and videos posted by inmates. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. This is Lifestyle Today. Hello Lifestyle Lovers, I'm Trick and I'm Davina. We are at the beautiful Eden Gardens. You know we couldn't come to Eden Gardens and not check out the spa, right? And this girl likes nice things. So let's go inside and check it out. I'm Carleen Brown and this is Jamaica Now. The private sector organization of Jamaica has urged the government not to engage in frivolous spending as elections draw near. PSOJ President William Mafood says Jamaicans have made too many sacrifices over the past two years to see these gains reversed by frivolous expenditure, as has happened in past elections. As we have seen in the past, every time that we do have elections and there is, you know, irresponsible expenditure, it has caused problems for us. And uh, this program that the country is now on, it speaks specifically to certain targets, certain policy decisions, and uh, specifically when it comes to expenditure and, and revenue. So it is critical at this time not to derail the program through any um, irresponsible spending. And the International Monetary Fund says Jamaica will face what it calls undesirable policy options like tax increases and job cuts if it wants to meet the public sector wage target under the four-year loan program. It says this is because the recently signed wage agreements push the wage take-up to 10.1% of GDP, which exceeds the 9% target. Vehicular traffic in sections of Prickly Pole District in Claremont St. Anne was disrupted this week as upset residents mounted roadblocks to protest the firing of Vinette Rob Odman as chairman of the Prickly Pole Primary and Infant School. Mrs. Rob Odman was fired by the Education Minister Ronald Thwaites for her decision to take students from the St. Anne School to participate in a political protest. The controversy deepened because an 11-year-old student collapsed while preparing to board the bus to be transported to the scene of the protest and later died. The opposition leader Andrew Holness says the entire saga stinks of corruption and his spokesperson on education Kamina Johnson-Smith has appealed for adults to keep young children out of politics. But why was the protest organized in the first place? The school board chairman had wanted the MP Lisa Hanna to account for money said to have been spent to pave the school yard. According to Mrs. Rob Odman, there was no pavement project at the school. Ms. Hanna has since said the project was never approved and so there could be no missing funds. Education Minister Ronald Thwaites says adequate furniture will be in place at Clancarthy High School in Kingston by Monday. The Clancarthy administration has been asking hundreds of students to stay away from school on certain days because of the furniture shortage. The Education Minister has instructed the school to ensure that makeup classes are provided for students who were absent. There is no word yet from the Commissioner of Corrections, Ina Fairweather, following a Gleaner expose on the prevalence of cell phones at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Facility. The phones are used by inmates to capture images and videos behind bars, which are then posted on the social media site Facebook. More in this report. Under the Corrections Act, it's an offense for inmates to possess cell phones and other recording equipment behind bars. But in Kingston, Jamaica, prison is the place where laws are broken. From the cells of the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center, inmates chronicle their stories in photos and videos and share them with the world through the social media site Facebook. From puffing spliffs to sporting jewelry, the prison selfies tell a range of stories captured on devices smuggled into the facilities by correctional officers, sources say. Videos also show the rough and tumble the tough conditions behind bars and the fight for life in a place on Kingston's waterfront hundreds call home. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Yo, yo, go on easy, man. Lord, the money make money more, brother. Yeah. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. Deal him here. No, yo, don't pawn up that. Don't pawn up, brother. There was another emotional testimony at the West Kingston Commission of Inquiry this week as a mother recounted the deaths of her sons. Marjorie Williams broke down in tears and sobbed uncontrollably as she told the commission how her sons were taken from her Tivoli Gardens home during the May 2010 operations and made to lay in a neighbor's garden. Williams said she peeked through a window in her house and saw several policemen standing over her sons. The woman said her sons, 17-year-old Denham Town High School student Fernando Grant and his brother, 20-year-old Fabian, were crying when a policeman told them to shut up. Williams said she ran to her father, who is blind, and told him what she saw and that she feared the police were going to kill her sons. And I heard this gunshot go off and I heard clearly Fabian Fernando said, Mommy, Mommy, they kill Puxy because his pet name is Puxy. Who, whose that, pet name that is That is Puxy? Fabian, Fam Fabian Grant. At this point, the woman broke down in tears and began sobbing and the inquiry had to take a break. Williams later said after hearing explosions and not hearing her son's voice, she went to a bedroom window and saw a policeman and a resident of Tivoli Gardens tossing Fabian's body into a police vehicle. We removed from the window and came on stairs and I told Daddy, I said, Daddy, they killed Fabian. He said, Marjorie, no, it can't be. Fabian, I said, yes, Daddy, Fabian and Fernando died too. I don't hear him calling again, Daddy. I don't hear him calling, Daddy. They, they both are killed. He said, Marjorie, no. No. I said, yes, Daddy, they killed me. He, he built up his faith because he's blind and he's very strong. And he said, Marjorie, hug me. He said, Marjorie, embrace me. And, I embrace, and he embraced me. And I, we were still crying, crying, crying. Opposition legislator Mike Henry wants his colleagues to boycott British Prime Minister David Cameron when he visits next week, unless the issue of reparation for the ills of slavery is placed on the agenda. Henry, who is the Member of Parliament for Central Clarendon, has noted that the Jamaican Parliament has approved a motion to seek reparation from Great Britain. He says he will not attend any functions involving the British Prime Minister if the matter of reparation is not on the agenda to be discussed with the visiting leader. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune into Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Carlene Brown, and before we go, we bring you highlights from the address of PNP President Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller at the party's annual conference at the National Arena on Sunday. In national security, criminal activities pose a threat to the security of our people and to our economic development. Like you, I too am very concerned about the increasing murders this year. This is a fight that everyone must be involved with. Comrades, we are delivering on jobs. Nearly 6,000 jobs have been created under the Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, JEEP, since we took office. Did you hear that? 60,000 jobs. I don't hear you clap the fact that 60,000 jobs. Come on, man. Uh, let me warn those who feel it is nice and sexy to rape a child. You better stop it now. I'm going to see that you get the full penalty of the law in this country if you rape a child. I don't care who you are. Stop the raping of our children. Stop it. Stop it. Demons. Stop it, demons.